While brainstorming for the next video idea, I stumbled upon this side of the month showcasing some impressive animations. This slider, similar to Instagram stories, really caught my eye. So I decided to challenge myself to recreate it because it stood out from the usual sliders we have built before. Take a look. This slider features a story timeline that shows how long each story is active before moving on to the next one. It operates automatically but you can also navigate between slides by clicking on either sides of the page. Plus, it loops through all six stories continuously. In this tutorial, we'll use HTML, CSS, JavaScript and GSAP to cover every aspect of this carousel. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. For access to the source code, check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's dive into the code. Let's start by creating a container. First, we'll add a custom cursor which will include a paragraph element. We'll set its inner content later using JavaScript based on the mouse movement. Next, we'll need a place to render the story images in the background. So we'll add a div for that and place an image inside it as the first story preview. To house all the content of the story, we'll add another div. We'll divide this into two parts. The top section will be further split into two parts, the indices and the profile details. For the indices, we'll have six index elements, each containing a highlight that will animate to demonstrate the active story's duration. In the profile section, we'll add a profile icon and the name. Inside the profile icon, we'll place an image and the profile name will have a paragraph element. The second part will contain the main title of the story and a link to an article. I'll divide the title into three rows, each with an h1 element. This way, we can easily implement the line reveal animation. The link will have an anchor element and that's it. Now let's move on to styling. First, we reset all margins and paddings to zero and set the box sizing to border box for all elements. Next, we set the HTML and body elements to occupy the full width and height of the viewport. We'll use the new Montreal font family, set a black background and hide the default cursor. For images, we position them absolutely within their containers, ensuring they cover the entire container by using object fit cover. Next, we style all headings, paragraphs and links with white color, remove any text decorations and set their font weights to 400. We'll also specify the font sizes for headings and the other text elements. Our main container will cover the entire viewport and hide any overflow to ensure no scroll bars appear. Now we style the custom cursor. It will be positioned absolutely with a width and height of 100 pixels. We'll center its content, give it a semi-transparent white background with a blur effect, make it circular and prevent it from receiving pointer events. We'll also set a higher Z index to ensure it stays on top. For the story images, we'll position them absolutely to cover the viewport and set their opacity to 0.5 for a subtle background effect. We then style the story content to be centered on the screen. We'll use Flexbox to arrange its content vertically and justify space between elements. We'll also add padding and transform properties to perfectly center it. For the indices section, we create a flex container to distribute the six index elements evenly. Each index will have a highlight element to show the active story's duration. In the profile section, we align the profile icon and name horizontally using flexbox with some spacing between them.
The title section will be divided into three rows, each containing an H1 element, allowing us to implement the line reveal animation. For the link section, we'll style the anchor element with a margin and padding. We'll also add an underline using the after pseudo element. Finally, we'll add media queries for responsiveness. On smaller screens, then 900 pixels will revert to the default cursor and adjust the story content width. Now before we get into the JavaScript part, let me show you how we are going to handle the data for this project. In this file, I have defined an array called stories that contains multiple objects. Each object represents a story with specific attributes. This data structure allows us to easily render each story with its associated profile, title, link, and image in our project. Let's start by importing the stories array from our data file. This array contains all the information about the stories we want to display. Next, we'll set up some initial variables. Active story to keep track of the currently active story index starting at zero. Story duration to define how long each story should be displayed set to four seconds. Content update delay to add a slight delay when updating the content set to 0.4 seconds. Direction to track the direction of the story change initially set to next. Story timeout to hold the timeout ID for changing stories. These variables will help us control the story playback and transitions. Now let's select the custom cursor element and its text content. We'll use these to display navigation hints like previous and next based on the mouse position. Now let's walk through the function that handles changing the stories in detail. First, we store the current active story index in a variable called previous story. This helps us keep track of which story we are transitioning from. Next, depending on the direction, we update the active story index. If the direction is next, we increment the index, wrapping it around using the modulo operator to ensure it stays within the bounds. If the direction is previous, we decrement the index, also using the modulo operator to wrap around if necessary. After that, we retrieve the data for the new active story from the stories array based on the updated active story index. Using GSAP, we animate the current profile name and title to slide out of view. The direction of the animation depends on whether we are moving to the next or previous story. We then select the current image container and image. This prepares us for transitioning the images. After a short delay, we update the content with the new stories data. We create a new paragraph element for the profile name, set its initial position based on the direction and append it to the profile name container. Then we animate the new profile name into place using GSAP. For each line in the story title, we create a new heading element, set its initial position based on the direction, append it to the corresponding title row and animate it into view. Next, we create a new image container and image element for this story.
We set the image source and alt attributes and append the new image container to the story image div. We then animate the new image into place using a custom function called animate new image which we'll define later. We also animate the scaling of the images to transition smoothly from the current image to the new story image. This involves animating the current image out and the new image in. We reset and animate the index highlights to indicate the active story. This is done by resetting the highlight for the previous story and animating the highlight for the new active story. To keep the DOM clean, we call a function to remove old elements that are no longer needed. We clear the previous timeout and set a new timeout to call the change story function again after the specified duration. This keeps the story transitions happening automatically. Finally, after a short delay, we update the profile image and link to reflect the new story's data. This ensures all elements are updated to match the new active story. Next, we define the animate new image function which animates the appearance of the new image. First, we set the initial clip path of the image container. If the direction is next, the clip path starts from the right, if previous, it starts from the left. Then we animate the clip path to reveal the entire image over one second using a smooth easing function. This makes the new image slide into view. The animate image scale function handles the scaling transition between the current and upcoming images. First, we scale up and rotate the current image out of view. The direction determines the rotation angle. Once this animation completes, we remove the current image. Next, we scale down and rotate the upcoming image into view. The direction also determines the initial rotation angle for this animation. Both animations last 1 second with smooth easing. Then we define reset index highlight function that resets the highlight of a given index. First, we select the highlight element of the specified index, stop any ongoing animations using kill twins off function. Then we animate the width of the highlight. If the direction is next, the width expands to 100%. If previous, it contracts to 0%. This animation lasts for 0.3 seconds. During the animation, we set the transform origin to the right center and scale the highlights x axis to 0 for a smooth transition. Next, we define the animate index highlight function which animates the highlight of a given index. First, we set the initial state of the highlight element. Its width is set to 0% and transform origin is set to the right center. Then, we animate the highlight's width to 100% over the duration of the story. This animation runs smoothly with a linear easing. Next, the cleanup elements function ensure our DOM remains clean and manageable. First, we select the profile name container and title rows. We remove access children from the profile name container, keeping only the last two elements. Next, we loop through each title row and remove access children, ensuring each row has only the last two elements. This keeps our elements tidy and prevents any buildup of unnecessary nodes. Next, we add an event listener for the mouse move event to enhance user interaction. When the mouse moves, we capture its client X and client Y coordinates. We use this app to smoothly move the custom cursor to follow the mouse position.
we determine the cursor's text and direction based on the mouse position relative to the viewport's width. If the mouse is on the left half, the cursor shows previous and sets the direction to previous. Otherwise, it shows next and sets the direction to next. Then we add an event listener for the click event to handle story changes on click. When a click occurs, we clear the current story timeout, reset the highlight for the active story and call the change story function to switch to the next or previous story. We set an initial timeout to call the change story function after the specified story duration, ensuring the story transition automatically. We also call animate index highlight for the active story to start the highlight animation. These functions and event listeners work together to manage user interactions and ensure smooth story transitions, providing a dynamic and engaging user experience. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.